An underwater volcano off Tonga has erupted, triggering a tsunami warning for several South Pacific Island nations, including New Zealand and Australia. A satellite image captured the eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haipa volcano, which sent a huge mushroom cloud plume of ash into the sky. Video posted to social media showed large waves washing ashore in Tongan coastal areas on Saturday, swirling around homes and businesses. It's been bubbling away since uh, late last year. And at about five o'clock last night, there was this massive eruption and this huge explosion, which you've shown, which amazingly was captured on satellite imagery. Now, we know volcanoes generate tsunamis. One of the most well-known is 1883 in Indonesia, and it killed 36,000 people. But this type of event in this region is a massive, a massive surprise. Beaches are being closed across the eastern seaboard as a tsunami warning is reissued for the South Pacific region. Evacuations are already underway for people in low-lying areas of Lord Howe Island. At Norfolk Island, a wave over a metre was recorded and residents of low-lying coastal areas are being advised to move to higher ground. A tsunami warning remains current for the mainland east coast from Fraser Island off Queensland to southern Tasmania with waves of 30 to 40 centimetres detected. Warnings have also been issued for the Pacific coast of America. Beaches and piers have been closed across Southern California as a precaution with small waves detected in Hawaii and Alaska. Okay, let's get more on the volcanic eruption in Tonga. And Sarah Scully is a senior meteorologist at the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. It's great to have you on the program this morning, Sarah. Can you just take us through the tsunami alerts for Australia? What area does that cover? Well, at the moment, it's covering from the east coast of Tasmania through the East Gippsland coast, right through New South Wales and into the south southeast coast of Queensland. And the latest news is that the land threat for the islands off the coast, for Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island, have been downgraded. They were a land threat. Now they have been down, downgraded to a marine threat. Those warnings will remain in place uh, for a particular location until there are no significant observations for six hours. So we're waiting to be really sure that the impacts and the energy from the volcanic eruption has dispersed and, it, and it's no longer of a danger to, to any uh, people out on the water. Mm. And Sarah, is that why the beaches will remain closed for that six hour period as the SES was just saying? That's right. There was a um, what's considered a significant observation at Twofold Bay on the south coast of New South Wales a couple of hours ago. Um, and so that resets the, the warnings, I suppose, where there's another six hour wait period where we continue to really closely monitor any of the, the buoy data and any of the tide data just to make sure that there's no uh, residual energy coming through and that the threat is truly passed. What are the specifics and the impact that this has had on our tides? And, and wave heights. Okay, well, um, it's the offshore islands that were most impact, impacted. We received a peak SIG um, increase in significant uh, tide data at Norfolk Island of 1.27 metres, and that was at 9 pm last night. There was a general increase in, in that tidal data in, in the pulses of energy that were coming through, but it did peak at 9 pm, and we have seen that the waves just subsequently slowly decreasing uh, over time, hence that, that warning has been downgraded since to a marine. And it's very similar for the east coast. We had an, a 0.82 metre wave that was recorded at the Gold Coast, 0.77 metre um, wave at Port uh, in New South Wales and another 0.65 metre at Twofold Bay. So it's been along that east coast that we've seen these, um, these increases in, in, in wave height that we've, been, we've made sure that we're the, the whole area has been made well aware that the, the warning is current. Do we have a sense of what impact this has had on Tonga and on the Pacific more broadly? Mm -hmm. um, what are you hearing on that front? Well, the, the eruption first occurred at, um, at 3.10 uh, Eastern Daylight Saving Time yesterday. And the, the wave, the 1.19 wave that has been used in the media came through around two hours and 10 minutes after that initial eruption. 
Um, since then, all of the communication has been cut. But looking from the satellite imagery of the actual volcanic island, that, that, that uh, is a very small island that's been making its own island over the last five or so years. So there's the, the actual volcano has no one living on it, but it was a small island that was protruding through the sea. Mm -hmm. And looking at that island from the satellite data now, you can see that the middle half of the, that island has since been removed or, or gone, it's completely mm -hmm. gone. So there's been a fair bit of change to the, the, the geography of, of, of the area. But with regards to Tonga, it's hard to tell at this stage. Um, there's no, no communication and um, any of the seismic data or, or the, uh, the, the, the information that was telling us about the activity of the volcano hasn't been coming through. Mm. So all we've had to rely on is the, the, the Dart Boys. The Dart Boys were, were uh, introduced after the, after the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami and they're, they're scattered around the Indian and Pacific Ocean and they measured changes in height to help prepare, us to prepare for any impending threat for a tsunami. And it was actually those Dart Boys that alerted us uh, late yesterday afternoon, early evening, that there was a change in the tide and subsequent warnings were issued across the Australian area. So, Sarah, just finally, on, on the surface of the water, everything looks to be reasonably normal, but what's happening under the surface that makes this so dangerous? Yeah, look, tsunami waves are really powerful, and that's because there's these huge surges of energy that are released by the um, volcano or the earthquake. In this case, it's a volcano, of course. And that, that energy is trapped beneath the ocean's surface. So that's why it's um, dispersed and spread out and and travels for such a long distance and the impacts are felt so far away. So um, yeah, the, the volcanic eruptions and earthquakes can have these effects that are felt right across the globe. There were warnings that were issued for Fiji, Japan, Canada, US, Hawaii. So the impacts were felt right across that Pacific basin. Right, Sarah Scully, a senior meteorologist at the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. It's great to have your insights this morning. We'll keep across it. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.